Hello and welcome to the first episode of TEW 2016. I feel like this game isn't as popular as it should be, so if you're not familiar with the game, it's pretty much just a general manager mode simulator, except it's a lot more detailed than the actual WWE games. And pretty much the game requires mods if you want, like WWE stuff. So like in this case, I have the 2003 WWE mod, but there's all sorts of mods you can get. And then there's also like non-WWE content and then even like original content from the actual developer of this game. So pretty much, so this way I save some time. I already booked the card, so all I have to do is simulate it. There was a locker room incident that I wasn't able to show on screen because it happened on Heat, which I, unless you guys want me to record the episodes of Heat, I'm just gonna kind of put random people on those and then just not really record them. But I will definitely record Raw and SmackDown, obviously, because those are our main shows. But pretty much the incident was just Hulk Hogan randomly picked up Christopher Nowinski as his prodigy. So yeah, he didn't really miss much. So I guess I will go ahead and I will book the show and I already did the card so we're gonna go ahead and run the show. And then I haven't quite figured out how to properly record this yet so some things are gonna look weird and then some are probably not gonna show up at all. But to start off, this is a pre-show match, so it's not actually part of the official show. But Tommy Dreamer and Spike Dudley defeated Chief Morley and D'Lo Brown. Got a decent rating for a pre-show match. And I usually do like two or three pre-show matches, so this way like lower card people that aren't on the main show can get some... like... momentum and match wins and all of that good stuff. And then pretty much down here it tells you like how everybody did. Tommy Dreamer got a 69 so that's definitely good. He's somebody that we're gonna want on the main show if he can pull off numbers like that. And then we'll go ahead and click next. And then another pre-show with Jeff Hardy and Raven. I think I screwed something up, so I'll or we'll figure out when I click next segment. But pretty much, yeah, there's nothing special here. It soon became clear that Jeff Hardy was wasted on drugs that really affected his performance. I had a feeling that might have happened, so that is partially why I put him on the pre-show. Between that and then forgetting to just book him. So I guess it's a good thing he was in the pre-show. And luckily I did not screw up because for some reason I thought this match was before the Jeff Hardy match. So I was like, I may have accidentally made Victoria and Jacqueline the main event, which would have been an awesome main event, but with the algorithms of this game, they need more popularity first. But in a terrible pre-show match, Victoria defeated Jacqueline with the Windows Peak. Unfortunately, the women are kind of like lower rated in this game, so like, until they boost their popularity and it will take a little while to like get their skills and stuff, they are not really as strong in this mod. So now we'll go ahead and do the next segment. And this is a freestyle segment. Pretty much when you do a freestyle, you kind of just make up what you want them to do. So in this case, Evolution comes out, they brag and all of that. Triple H is the World Heavyweight Champion. And right now he's in a feud with Scott Steiner to battle at Royal Rumble for the champion. Which I might go along with it. I do want to like keep some surprises, but I'm probably not going to make Scott Steiner the champion. But pretty much, yeah, they're all out in the ring, and then Eric Bischoff decides in the main event it's going to be Triple H and Ric Flair against Shawn Michaels and Scott Steiner. So yeah, that's about it for that one. Let's go ahead and click next. 
And then in our opening match, we have the Dudleys versus 3 Minute Warning, which it's funny because I totally forgot that Umaga was Jamal at one point until I started playing with this mod. So yeah, Devon picked up the win. They got pretty decent performance. Rosie and Jamal are on the lower side, which I'm not surprised because I'm pretty sure this is their rookie year. And then after the Dudleys win the match, William Regal and Lance Storm decide to come out and attack them. Right now they're in a feud with each other as well as Booker T and Goldust, so I figured it'd be fitting, especially because they were upset because they didn't get the tag match tonight, so they attack the Dudleys. And now in the next segment we have Molly Holly in an interview, basically she's just talking trash and telling the interviewer how much she hates Trish Stratus. Molly's like, I'm gonna win this match, Trish sucks, blah blah blah. So now, in the actual match, Trish defeated Molly Holly with the Stratus faction. And pretty much, Trish is always gonna win the matches for the most part, because if you try to make her lose the match, she complains about it, which has to do with the popularity, which we'll go over a little later. But yeah, Trish wins the match, and then we have an interview with Terry, or I should say an interview, Terry's doing the interview with Ric Flair who is talking about how Batista and Randy Orton are going to be the next best thing. They're going to win their tag team match tonight against Booker T and Goldust. And in the next match we have Christian taking on Test. I ended up, Christian's the winner. Test is pretty low popularity in this mod, which I'm not surprised because I think at this point it's when he was kind of losing his relevance. But yeah, Christian had a good performance. And then they actually made Test a face. I don't know, it might have actually been when he was a face, but I don't think he was a face that long. And then after the match, I did another freestyle, but pretty much after Christian defeated Test, he gets on the microphone, he starts trash talking everybody in the back room. And then RVD and Kane come out, they get into it with each other. There's pretty much another rivalry going on for the Royal Rumble, and it's just a bunch of random Raw and SmackDown superstars. I am going to eventually make my own storylines, but at the moment I kind of just left the default ones. And then in a backstage, not an interview, but just backstage, Shawn Michaels and Scott Steiner are talking to each other. They're pretty much just strategizing how they're going to win tonight's tag team match against Triple H and Ric Flair. And then in this tag match, this is the one that Ric Flair was hyping earlier, Booker T and Goldust defeated Evolution. Booker T carried the match in terms of ring performance, which I guess, yeah, he definitely did. Which I'm not surprised because Batista and Randy Orton are still rookies at this time, so they're not quite to the star power level that they have nowadays. And now let's go ahead and, that's right, I f almost forgot about this. After Booker T and Goldust pick up the win, Batista and Randy Orton weren't happy, so they attacked, as well as their manager Ric Flair, and it didn't end good. I don't know. <laughs> and then, alright, this was a really good match. I threw RVD against Chris Jericho. Chris Jericho picked up the win. And since they were both part of the Royal Rumble storyline, it picked up some heat in the rivalry. So now, in the next segment, Triple H and Ric Flair enter the ring. Pretty much, they decided they want to brag and talk trash about the crowd. The crowd's not too happy about it. And then after this, it is going to be the main event. Alright, and it got an 85, which is not bad, especially since it's a tag team match. So Triple H and Ric Flair defeated Shawn Michaels and Scott Steiner. Pretty straightforward match. Shawn Michaels and Triple H definitely 
95 of those performances, and then Scott Steiner and Ric Flair are kinda where I expected them to be. And then I think that's it. Oh, okay, just Triple H and Ric Flair celebrate in the ring, which I pretty much did because I needed like two more minutes of segment. So now we're going to end the show and then we'll see how we did in terms of ratings. 84, all right. And then all it says is the show increased our popularity in 18 regions, which is pretty good because I'm still getting the hang of this game. I pretty much am starting to figure out how to book good cards now. Definitely, if you want to give me some advice on how to book even better cards, feel free in the comments because I'm still learning. But yeah, let's go ahead and click continue. And then it just shows a random profile as we wait for the game to load. And then we should be getting like some emails pretty much telling us about the ratings. Sometimes we get some superstar opinions and all of that good stuff. I don't know why it's like not responding. Alright, so yeah, we got some emails and that's right, we also have to deal with the Jeff Hardy incident. So we'll go ahead and check those. Typically it doesn't actually fill the screen like that, but like I said, this isn't set up right and I gotta like play around with it to get it set up so that it looks like the actual game. Alright, so Kevin Kelly has some offers. I'm not even sure who that is to be honest. Raven is feeling the effects and is asked to... Alright, so pretty much that's weird because that's the only match I booked Raven in. And unless maybe he had a minor injury I wasn't aware of, either that or maybe that happened because of Jeff Hardy wrestling intoxicated. So Raw got a 9.61 TV rating. And then the next four emails are my favorite because usually when the other superstars give opinions it's like the most random people they're like, you should get rid of this guy. So let's see who Ric Flair is mad at. William Regal doesn't connect with the fans, he's a waste of time. Jamal has poor ring, psychology, he's probably not worth keeping around. Raven is too clumsy in my opinion. Tess just doesn't get it. <laughs> so yeah, it seems like, which a lot of the people, they're not fully developed in the ring anyway, so I'm not surprised. So now let's see what this one is. So incident involving Jeff Hardy. And this is where it is like, I don't think you guys are able to see the message, but pretty much it wants me to choose what to do with Jeff Hardy. So hopefully by the next episode I'll have this fixed, but pretty much it gives us the option to fire him, which we're not going to go to that extreme yet. Suspend him, send him to rehab, fine, stern warning, slap on the wrist, and then take no action. Which I think to start, we're going to go ahead and fine him to see if maybe he will not do that in the ring. And then there's another message that popped up and pretty much it just says the incident has been handled, nothing noteworthy has resulted from it. So we'll go ahead, close that out. And then I will show you guys our roster. Alright, that does load. So pretty much everybody that was in WWE in 2003 in the beginning of the year is currently on our roster in either SmackDown or Raw. So my goals, pretty much, I definitely want to build a women's division. Right now, though, we're kind of lacking in women. Because we have Trish Stratus, who's our main diva, which, as you can see, her popularity is 66. The problem with her right now is she doesn't want to lose to anybody, which isn't a bad thing, but then when you compare, pretty much... The only other competition she has at the moment is Victoria, who has 42 popularity versus 66, so it's a pretty big difference. And I forgot, Victoria's actually currently the WWE Women's Champion. And then Molly Holly's pretty much the highest, but she has like 50. 
And then I'm pretty sure we also have like Ivory and then Jacqueline, which we can use as well. And then we do have Lita and Jazz, but they're currently injured, so they will come back at some point, but I don't know when. And then we have pretty much, yeah, all our main eventers, like The Rock, Undertaker, Hulk Hogan. And then we can also sign people to our show as well if we go here. Pretty much anybody you can think of that was in wrestling in 2003 we can pick up. So like for example, if we want to sign, I don't know. Paul London, we can sign him because at the time he wasn't signed to WWE. And then a lot of the people like him, he's not really well known and he probably needs to develop his skills. So if we were to sign Paul London, for example, I would probably send him to Developmental, which was OVW at this time. And then we have a small list of people here. A lot of them, I think, like Canyon and Mark Henry were sent here because they were injured at the time. So we will probably call them up pretty soon. Oh yeah, and then Rhino too. But yeah, I think that's gonna be it for this episode. If there's anybody you guys want me to sign, let me know in the comments. Because I could pretty much sign anybody because we're WWE, so... The only people that I don't think we could sign is if they're in a contract with TNA, which I think is mainly just people like Dixie Carter and Jeff Jarrett that we probably wouldn't sign anyway. And then there's a few people that I would say Vince doesn't like, but I actually selected Vince as the avatar, so we might be able to sign them. But yeah, let me know who you want me to sign, if there's any matches you might want to see in the future. And yeah... Thank you for watching. I hope you guys liked the video and feel free to subscribe if you haven't already and have a good day. Bye.